At the School of Surveying and Spatial Information Systems, we're interested in positioning for a whole range of different applications, from locating people's land boundaries or cadastral surveying, to engineering for large infrastructure projects, mining surveying for mine operations, uh, hydrographic surveying for determining the undersea surface, also oil and gas exploration. In the last 20 years or so, satellite positioning has really revolutionised how we go about undertaking these tasks. The first satellite positioning service was GPS, the Global Positioning System. This was designed by the US Department of Defence and it was designed to give us 10 metres of accuracy instantaneously anywhere on the Earth. But researchers have been working on techniques and devices to improve that accuracy further and these days we can get centimetre level positioning in next to no time at all. But we don't only talk about GPS anymore. Nowadays, the Russians have a system called GLONASS, which is almost fully operational. The Europeans have plans for their own system called Galileo. The Chinese have launched a few satellites which will evolve into their own global system called Compass. And the Indians and the Japanese are also investigating plans for their own regional navigation satellite systems. So we don't just talk about GPS anymore, we talk about GNSS, that's Global Navigation Satellite Systems, and RNSS, Regional Navigation Satellite Systems. In recent years, research at the school has diversified into the realm of electrical engineering and digital signal processing. Associate Professor Andrew Dempster and his team have been designing and building their own GNSS receiver with a difference. Andrew, what's special about the UNSW receiver? Well, Craig, as you mentioned earlier, the situation with satellite navigation at the moment is that there are several systems, and each of those systems is transmitting or will be transmitting on several different frequencies. Well, what we're ultimately trying to achieve with our receiver is to be able to look at all of those systems with all of their signals and come up with a, a receiver which is called a system of systems receiver. So Andrew, is this the receiver here? Yeah, these are our early generations. This is our first generation receiver. This is our second generation receiver. The first generation one has one front end there which just accepts signals from the normal GPS L1. This second one has two front ends and we can receive GPS L1 and the new signal GPS L2. But what makes these uh, receivers unique is this chip. It's an FPGA or a field programmable gate array. Inside there is the microprocessor for the, for the receiver and we can reconfigure both the hardware and the software of the receiver so that we can try out different algorithms. So it's a very versatile research platform. Uh, we're working on our third generation receiver now and we're looking to, for that receiver to be able to receive in five bands. So it will be able to receive all the signals from all the systems. But these other systems are sort of GPS plus, working where GPS doesn't work and that's where a lot of our research is focused at the moment and we're aiming in the, in the long run to be able to position anywhere, anytime. A dozen different uh, universities and institutes have bought these receivers and are using them in their research. We've had a big win recently, uh, the DLR in Germany, that's like their version of NASA, they've put one of our receivers on a sounding rocket, flew it up to 80 kilometres above the surface of the Earth, which is sort of the low end of space, and our receiver performed very well throughout the entire flight and it outperformed another GPS receiver which was on the same rocket. Uh, it's great news for us. We're hoping that uh, in the medium to long term we'll be able to get one of our receivers onto a satellite.